Hello, everyone. Uh, so today we are going to uh, continue with our chapters, and this is a new chapter about memory management in uh, operating systems. Uh, so far, we have talked about uh, mostly the distinction between process thread and process management subsystems, so that we will have uh, concurrency uh, where we have multiple processes, threads try to access uh, similar areas, same areas, and uh, how to manage that. Also, how we can synchronize that. Then we start to talking about scheduling, where we have sharing of CPU among the processes and threads. So, um, in this chapter, we are going to talk about memory management subsystem, where we share this CPU, uh, not CPU, but, uh, sorry, the memory among the threads uh, and processes. Uh, so this is one of the core facilities of the operating system, uh, sharing of memory, organizing of the memory. So uh, this is another uh, abstraction. Uh, if you remember, uh, processes are abstractions over uh, CPU for the computer programs and memory management subsystem provides an abstraction so that we will have uh, some illusion of continuous large areas memory per process even though we have a limited physical uh, memory in the actual hardware uh, that is running the operating system. Uh, this is going to provide this uh, isolation also. That means a process probably belonging to user A uh, and other users uh, cannot access uh, the memory of a process belonging to user B. User A and user B processes are uh, isolated from each other. Even though two processes belong to same uh, user, it is not a, a convenient and not a uh, desirable thing to share an access there uh, memory arbitrarily because they can corrupt it. Uh, so this uh, isolation is quite useful and we uh, need that in a real operating system. Uh, and then uh, as the uh, next item, we have also this allocation of uh, physical memory is another uh, important issue because uh, we have uh, uh, some sort of uh, race uh, between the processes uh, to get as much uh, memory as possible. And as I said, physical memory is limited and we like to be fair uh, for all of the processes users so that they can get their share of memory uh, when they need, but not more than they need. Uh, and the uh, next important thing is, of course, we should have uh, the overhead of this system should be as small as uh, possible. So that when trying to access memory, you shouldn't spend other resources like processes, a pro CPU resource, or in order to use one gigabyte mem of memory, you shouldn't spend 100 megabytes of memory for just memory management. Uh, we have a couple of different mechanisms uh, uh, One important mechanism is virtual address translation. Uh, the virtual memory comes with uh, address translation. So when you talk about virtual memory, you are talking about some sort of address translation. Uh, this is provided by paging and uh, translation look aside buffers, uh, some hardware support, but paging is another essential part of the virtual memory management. Uh, and everything comes with this uh, page table management and page tables. Uh, then, uh, when you talk about multiple uh, processes uh, competing for the limited memory resources, then uh, you should talk about uh, the uh, policies of memory management so that how you are going to 
make everyone's uh, memory uh, available as possible. So virtual memory is this our uh, basic uh, abstraction. Uh, sorry, I just my cursor, I believe. Uh, so the Okay, so uh, the virtual memory is this uh, abstraction uh, we uh, the operating system provides, uh, and it has a couple of features that are supported. First thing, uh, all processes doesn't have to have all of their memories in physical memory at all the time. Uh, because since we are going to uh, utilize the memory usage among the processes, we should uh, let them uh, use the memory when they are actually using the memory, when they are actually accessing the memory areas. Otherwise, keeping everything in memory is uh, useless. Also, we have another uh, competitor for memory, which is uh, caching, uh, file cache, page cache, device cache. We are going to talk about that in the later chapters. Uh, so uh, we have RAM usage is as need basis. You are going to use RAM as much you need as uh, uh, as much as you need. Okay. Uh, this is because of one uh, typical feature: all processes doesn't use all of the memory always because most of the processes are on a single loop most of the their time or they are on different regions of memory. You are accessing that area of data structure, or this areas of data structure most of the time. So you don't need all memory all the time. And they will uh, give us an opportunity to share memory better. Uh, so we are going to allocate the memory when, uh, at the latest point possible, if you like. And we are going to take away the memory when it is not used for a, uh, some amount of time. And this way we can have only a subset of uh, actual memory needed by a process at physical memory at the time. So we should uh, observe this runtime behavior and depending on we should have some dynamic memory management algorithms uh, providing this. Another thing is the isolation. That means uh, the processes have their own virtual memory and they can access their virtual memory. It is like their sandbox, they can play with uh, any way they like. But in this sandbox, there's some sort of prison. They cannot go out of the sandbox. And each process has such a sandbox. And virtual memory provides that in uh, by addresses. Uh, translation of addresses and so on. Uh, in order to provide this address translation and virtual memory, uh, we cannot do that everything in software, so we need help of the hardware. Uh, and uh, most uh, uh, commonly used uh, hardware in the architectures is called translational look aside buffer. We are going to talk about this. And also we will have some uh, operating system support for managing everything. Uh, this basic uh, hardware uh, support you can get uh, for memory management is called memory management unit. Uh, most of the contemporary hardware has that uh, so that address translation is helped by hardware in order to accelerate it. Acceleration is the key uh, word here. Uh, otherwise, uh, for each byte access, you cannot execute a couple of CPU instructions. Okay, uh, if you do that everything, do everything in software, each simple memory access cannot end up in a couple of uh, CPU instructions. 
you will make some memory available with three instructions, then execute the instruction. This is uh, not feasible at all. Uh, in a small hardware like uh, embedded uh, hardware and so on, uh, there is no memory management unit and you have to uh, bring whole pages of the process in memory in scheduling and so on. Okay, so uh, in, in addition to uh, isolation and the others, we also have a couple of uh, other requirements. One is protection. Um, the protection of uh, areas uh, of different processes from each other is isolation. Also, we need to protect them. Uh, for example, the code segments should be uh, read-only, for example or some areas read, write, and only um, mapped and required segments should be available for arbitrary access and so on. So we have to provide that. Uh, so we, we can have executability of a memory area, read only, read, write access of a memory area will be an issue. Also, if it is shared or not is another issue. Everything should be fast and uh, in the context switching, if you remember, virtual memory of a process A is switching to virtual memory of process B when you are uh, switching from process A to process B. Assume we have 100 megabytes here, 100 megabytes on the other. And if you, during context switch, if you copy 100 megabytes of memory from somewhere to somewhere, it is not feasible again. So you have to uh, make these things as best as possible, and thanks to hardware, we can do that. Uh, so virtual addresses uh, is uh, the virtual memory area of a program is called virtual address space. And usually we have a typical signature, and that typical signature is like that. At the bottom or at zero, we have the code segment, which is part of the binary, executable instructions are placed in memory, uh, and they are fetched and executed from this area of the memory. Then we have uh, initialized variables and uninitialized variables. I am going to show you the difference in a moment. Uh, but actually, if I should just write down here. Uh, it is when you define something as like this in C, a global variable like this in C, it is an initialized variable. However, if you define it like that, so this is initialized and this is not initialized. Uh, if you define it like that, uh, they are created on different segments. Uh, the reason is uh, actually interesting because uh, of the binary loading part. We are not uh, talking about that much in this course, but when you have a binary with an exec call when you are loading, uh, that binary on disk should be loaded in the program's memory. And when it is loading, uh, those segments are created. This is called uh, linker loader. Uh, so uh, they are loaded segment by segment. So the code, the executable segments are loaded here. Uh, and uh, initialized variables, which are the variables like that, are loaded here. And uninitialized variables are loaded from nowhere because you don't have to store it somewhere. Initialized variables have, uh, have to be stored on disk, but not initialized variables doesn't have to be stored on disk. Only thing you know, need is size of your total global variable area. So three megabytes of zeros. You don't have to store three megabytes of zeros. You only need to store three megabytes. So this uninitialized variable segment is uh, only uh, maintained as the size. And when the program is loaded, it is loaded as a segment in the uh, virtual memory area of the program. Then comes heap and the stack. Heap grows from small numbers to large numbers. Stack grows from large numbers to small numbers. And usual stack is uh, the 
at the lower area of the memory or the larger addresses part. And there is an area which is reserved for the operating system. Now let me show you the uh, show you this in an example here. Uh, so I have a code here. Just kick me out. So this is uh, my program, and uh, in this program, uh, I would like to show you the initialized parts, which is this area, which is 10,000. Uh, and the not initialized is this one, which is 20,000, 20,000. And then in the main program, I just get an my lock of size 30,000. So if you multiply them by uh, the size of int, it will be like uh, 40 kilobytes, 80 kilobytes, and 120 kilobytes. Uh, then I also uh, print the pointers of those addresses. Uh, and now let us go here and uh, Let's try to observe the areas. Uh, what you should do in a uh, typical Linux system is compile this code, run it, and then after you run it, uh, if you know this uh, process ID, you can use pmap utility here this one, uh, just, so this pmap here can be used to get, retrieve this uh, memory area uh, of the process. And this one is our memory area with pmap. Uh, so now let us uh, observe the regions. Uh, this is our, code area, the execu executable code resides here. It is a very small program, so it is just four kilobytes. Uh, we need some uh, read-only sections for uh, protection purposes. And if there are constants in your code, like the C string is, for example, a constant here, it has to be preserved there. So it is not a writable area, read-only area. And uh, our programs, constant strings, etc., are preserved here. Uh, now we are seeing our first area here, which is basically uh, this initialized memory, okay? That is 40 kilobytes of memory. And then we is have an 80 kilobytes of read-write section just following it, which is the which is uh, named as anonymous, but uh, anonymous means zero page actually. So it is a page that is initialized to zero when allocated. So uh, it fits very well with our definition. Uninitialized variable segment is this one. And uh, as the last, we have another anonymous section, which is basically our heap. So in this way, uh, the memory of our program is mapped on the memory area of our program. Uh, so I don't know if you are seeing it, but this is an output generated by the program. Uh, so the uh, init, which is the initialized section is at this address, which is basically 
E000 and E060, basically, we have a mapping from here to this one. So this one is in this area. If you, in the pointers, you can see that. And in non initialized we have just something strange, uh, DB177. Uh, CC, so it is the boundary is a little bit different than the actual one. So it is one page uh, before the segment starts. Uh, the reason uh, can be about the fragmentation and so on. So this is also a redress section. So system is using the fragments of that. Uh, the last one is the heap and heap should come from this address and it is so okay so this is the memory areas of uh, typical uh, linux uh, process now let us go back to our presentation and okay So basically what happens in this virtual addressing is uh, those virtual addresses are in uh, the uh, process memory. So process refers to them as you see in the pointers in the example. But in actual life, uh, they map into physical addresses. And those physical addresses are just um, shuffled in the uh, physical memory of the computer, probably in Tel Aviv. So now we have uh, something interesting here. Uh, we have a continuous area here, which is a fragmented and interleaved area. So this part is the continuous memory. This is the This area is fragmented. So uh, the, uh, this is one of the important advantages of virtual memory. If you have such a mapping possible, our uh, processes single-mindedly use the memory for large areas of arrays, uh, heaps, data structures, code, uh, however, in the physical memory, we can put those in any place we like. And the nice thing about that, if uh, there are unused areas of those spaces, so if process is not using some of the uh, continuous uh, area of this virtual memory area, we can have uh, them not loaded in physical memory at all. Uh, mostly the virtual memory is uh, fragmented. In the 64-bit uh, system, you will have uh, a huge memory area, 64-bit area, which is impossible to fill. There is no physical hardware supporting that much memory. In 32-bit uh, architecture, it is 4 gigabytes. Uh, even though it is large, uh, most of the processes do not use it. And not as large as 64, but most of the processes do not use. They use only a fragment of them. So we can use this uh, advantage to continuous to uh, fragmented uh, mapping in our advantage through this translation. So this, I'm uh, losing my mouse pointer sometimes and Okay, and uh, the most uh, important question is how this thing works. So uh, what we are going to do is we are going to provide a mechanism to translate this. So virtual addresses and physical addresses will be completely independent from each other. 
So we need to keep this uh, mapping somewhere, this translation mapping somewhere. Uh, also, isolation is provided because each process will have a different mapping. So uh, this box in the middle can be different for each uh, process so that when I context switch, I change the data of this box so that I will end up in a different uh, memory mapping so that the isolation will be on the fly, uh, on the, sorry, automatically. Uh, also, relocation is possible. If you uh, have to, you can take this physical area, carry it to somewhere else, and then change the mapping. And that's it. So you will have basically, you can move this area to here. And if you mark it in the memory management unit with this new mapping, your process will not understand this process will happily access the uh, old memory location which didn't change but the physical mapping changed and I, we are going to use this for uh, uh, swapping uh, and uh, paging out as paging in purposes so uh, what does it look like? So we will have uh, for the, to be clear, CPU is not aware of this thing is going on. CPU is just single mindedly executing instructions and those instructions storing and uh, getting values in and out of the physical memory. And it is fetching instructions also from the memory and CPU just simply doing that. So what we need is we need uh, in the hardware, a memory management unit so that uh, applying this translation mapping without CPU noticing as less as possible, let me say. So uh, for that we have uh, a mapping hardware or it can be done in software as well. But we have some mapping, but more importantly, in order to make this fast, we have a special hardware what we call uh, translation look aside buffer, uh, providing this mapping very fast, instantly. Uh, this is thanks to some cache-like architecture. This cache-like architecture is uh, also called associative memory. Uh, and uh, the idea is if you provide some part of uh, data, the rest is filled from hard, uh, a hardware table uh, instantly in a uh, small number of delay, so small amount of delay. Uh, so this thing is, uh, has different uh, names. Uh, so this is called associative memory uh, cache, of course. Uh, also content addressable memory. And sometimes they refer to them fully associative. So, uh, so this is uh, the names for that. Uh, they sometimes change it intentionally, but the idea is everything is like a cache for TLB. Usually we use uh, the associative part of the uh, cache is equal to your uh, address to be mapped. So it's called fully uh, associative memory or uh, content addressable memory sometimes. Uh, but uh, we also take advantage of cache so that when you provide uh, an arbitrary cache, let me say. So when you provide this, uh, address and the cache part, you will take the mapping corresponds to that. So basically in the single mindedly, a cache is a translation so that when you uh, provide a virtual address is going to give you 
physical address from a table lookup, but the table lookup has complexity uh, just one, order one. So it is going to answer you instantly. Uh, so this is uh, basically TLB. We are going to talk more about TLB later. Uh, so how this uh, translation mapping is possible? So let us uh, think about that uh, for some time. Uh, so the fixed partition is one of the earliest uh, approach. It was running in early uh, Intel CPUs like 8086. Uh, the idea is we divide our memory into uh, fixed size partitions. So basically uh, they are like one kilobyte partitions. Okay. Uh, so uh, what we do is we uh, keep a base register and the offset within that page. So the page register will show you which partition you are uh, addressing. And offset is uh, the memory within that uh, address. Uh, based on that, if you uh, add this number, basically shift base, base registers, for example, in this example, 10 bits, and then add the offset, you will end up the actual physical memory. Uh, the advantage of uh, this is you can give, for example, each process a different base register. And based on that, they will have some isolation possible. Uh, so this is one of the easiest uh, memory uh, mapping possible. And as I said, it is used in early uh, uh, architectures, uh, 64 kilobytes was in Intel architectures and it was uh, used for uh, differentiating code and memory and so on, not uh, for multi processes, but within the same program, uh, the code segments, the code partition and the uh, data partition can be separated this way. And changing the data partition, the program can access different areas of memory. Uh, so your code will be more relocatable and so on. So that when you write some code, it can be loaded in different partitions and you given the base register, you can start continuing continue running on that and so on. Uh, but we have uh, disadvantages. It is fast, okay. Uh, the memory management code is very simple uh, in hardware and software, it is very simple. However, we have internal uh, fragmentation. For example, one key is not sufficient for anyone. So you have to make it 64, not enough. So 120, one megabyte or 10 megabytes. Then a small program of size four kilobytes will use one megabyte. A large program will not fit in one megabyte. And all programs will have some uh, area of uh, memory wasted if you make it larger. So the static partition size doesn't work. Uh, it is like a single shoe for everyone, single shoe size for everyone. Uh, this wasted amount of memory is called internal fragmentation. So within the partition, you are not using all of the uh, memory. Uh, the next approach can be variable partitions. Uh, in the uh, variable partitions, you don't have a uh, single uh, partition, but a single register, but two registers, base register and limit register, or you can implement as a size registers if you like. So you have two registers and it defines your partition. So if a program using one megabyte of memory will have their base and limit registers adjusted so that it is going to be larger. Small program will have only one uh, kilobyte and so on, you can adjust that. Uh, so what we have is, from base register to limit register, you can use as much memory you like, okay? Uh, but this will end up in areas of memory that are not used within the partitions, between the partitions, not within, but uh, between the partitions. And um, especially if you consider memory as programs loaded, unloaded, loaded, unloaded. 
one kilobyte program loaded then one megabyte loaded then one kilobyte unloaded then five kilobyte loaded one gigabyte kilobyte unloaded and so on so you will have this allocated for it allocated for it and you will end up in some uh, memory area you have sufficient amount of memory but not sufficient amount for one megabyte of memory okay you will always have memory but they will have tiny pieces distributed everywhere if they if, if you add all of them up you will end up in 10 megabytes but actually you don't have one megabyte of memory continuous you will end up in such situations and this is called uh, external uh, fragmentation and it is not desirable so modern hardware provide us this we have uh, the paging uh, within the page the addresses are the same so uh, we have area of memory is reserved as offset and that offset is same in virtual memory and uh, physical memory uh, so what we have is we translate page numbers to frame numbers frames are in physical memory pages are in virtual memory sometimes i refer to them as physical page but physical page equal to frame uh, if i use that uh, in the future uh, the virtual memory uh, address is not translated virtual memory page number is translated into physical memory frame number in this way our translation will be uh, easier we will have uh, instead of tiny bytes translated we will only translate the page number so for example if you have four mega uh, four gigabytes of memory and four uh, kilobytes pages uh, you have one million number to translate not uh, four billion numbers to translate okay uh, also, there are other advantages we are going to talk about later. In the application perspective, uh, each of them will have the pages in physical memory distributed everywhere. Uh, however, uh, in their virtual memory, they are in the they are in their continuous spaces, and memory management unit knows which process it is, and based on that, it has a different address translation providing the pages of process A to pages of process A, pages of process B to process B, and so on. And this is provided by address translation. Uh, so this is uh, the uh, page table approach, which is uh, commonly used uh, in uh, modern hardware. Uh, we, we are using a multi-level version of this. We are going to talk about that later. This is the uh, single level page table. The idea is we need something to uh, convert uh, this virtual page numbers into some physical page numbers, okay? So this is mapped to somewhere else. The rest part, which is this offset is the same in the physical memory as well. So this part is in the uh, virtual page numbers, and sorry, this is the physical, okay. Um, so this, as this translation can be done, single-mindedly in a table basically so you have to keep which virtual page number maps to which physical memory for that process so per process we keep such a table which is uh, our address translation table so this one virtual page number so in this page number if you access this index it's like an array array of addresses if you access this it is going to give you the physical address and from that physical address if you add this offset you will find the physical memory so offset is the same 
virtual page to physical page translation is like a simple array lookup. That's it. Uh, however, uh, we need to uh, preserve more information in the address translation tables uh, because we need to keep uh, protection information uh, and also for later chapter we are going to talk about uh, swapping out, swapping in, paging out, paging in. For that we need to keep uh, reference information. Also, we are going to need modification because uh, some of the pages needs to be written back on disk. So for that purpose, we add, uh, in a typical hardware, we add this five bits. Modify bit indicates the page is modified in memory. And if you uh, need to keep that in secondary storage, you have to write it. So that page needs to be written. If you are delocating this page, uh, in dirty case, you have to write it. If you are delocating this page, if it is not dirty, it's very easy, just discard it. Uh, the reference bit is used if it is recently referenced and it is used for, uh, as I said, paging in, paging out algorithms. But it bit is important because as you can see in the examples, uh, our virtual memory address space is very uh, fragmented, so you are not using all of them. So it is just a, a, a minimum subset or just a fraction of the actual memory area. The rest, all those remaining pages are not used and you have to mark them as invalid. So we have this notion of the pages that are in physical memory valid, the others are not valid. Uh, this non-valid can be not yet sometimes. We are going to talk about that later. Uh, then we have uh, the protection bits, as I mentioned, executable, writable, not writable, shared or not. So we have to keep those information. Uh, then the remaining is used for page frame number. So in a typical architecture, we will have this. Uh, so this 20 bits are reserved for physical pages. Uh, how they are updated is another issue. Sometimes they can be updated by MMU hardware, sometimes, uh, or some of them are updated by the operating system. Uh, so paging simplifies physical memory management. You don't have to deal with tiny pieces. Uh, so this free list of physical frames are kept here. Uh, no external fragmentation because the page size is fixed. So you can use arbitrary areas of physical memory for mapping of the uh, different processes. So there is no space wasted with, with, between uh, the frames. Uh, and we can have uh, memory allocation done in uh, a fine granularity. That means uh, you only allocate the required parts, the rest cannot be allocated, or you can swap out unused pages on secondary storage. Uh, and So the uh, page tables work this way. Each process has its own uh, page table. We usually uh, keep uh, it. So we have this base pointer, uh, which is like a register. So uh, the pointer uh, points to the uh, address table of the process. So basically switching from one process to the other is basically switching from uh, one uh, page table to the other. So when, when you switch from process B to process A, you give MMU start of the new page table. In this way, MMU simply uses that register for address translation. So you are giving 
the start of an uh, address table to MMU when you are using process A. Then for process B, you are going to get different pointers, so you will switch it in a single uh, update instruction, single pointer update instruction. Uh, so TRV, TRV, uh, uh, as we said, it has uh, the um, special hardware. It is a uh, uh, expensive hardware because it needs uh, too many uh, gates uh, for uh, having that. Uh, probably you will learn more about that in the uh, computer architecture courses. Uh, the uh, since in order to make it instant, you don't have any chance to, for example, loop, iterate over all of the uh, entries and find it. So you will have a set of lines here, a set of lines here, and when they match, uh, the result will uh, fire uh, instantly, so you will get the uh, value out. So they will cache most recently uh, translation, and uh, so that, that means when your CPU is peacefully executing instructions, if it finds everything in TLB, instantly MMU will translate in a no delay option and it will find the physical memory and CPU will access it directly. Uh, the uh, problem here is TLB is not unlimited, it is limited. As I said, it is expensive. So we will encounter TLB misses, especially when your programs first started, you will see it, or context, after context switch, you will see, you will observe many TLB misses. Uh, when you're working in the same memory area, you start using TLB, utilizing ULB. When you're jumping some strange area in your code, you will start observing TLB miss again. So TLB miss is, has to be handled. Uh, so uh, this is very fast, so it is very efficient, and it, the mapping is basically instant. <coughs> um, so when there is a TIB miss, the address translation has to be looked in page tables, which needs uh, main memory access. You make a main memory access, find the TIB, uh, and find the physical frame, and that physical frame has to be updated in TLB so that next time you access the same area, you will find it on TLB. So TLB update is necessary. Who does it that? Uh, one option is doing that automatically by MMU. MMU hardware does that. So it loads the page table entry and uh, updates TLB and gives to CPU. Uh, usually, uh, we have this cycle. Uh, I can write it down here. So when you have TLB uh, memory access case, first option, TLB hit, it is just access it. And the second is TLB miss. So you will have get it from page table. TLB retry. Okay, retry accessing same memory. And in this retry, since TLB is updated, you will hit one. So it's going to be, you will hit next time. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is the MMU provided version. Uh, this can be done by software as well. Uh, so it is going to cause a trap, the interrupts uh, to the operating system and operating system will update the TRB. Uh, this can be a good thing uh, in some, uh, to some extent. Uh, uh, first of all, the page table format will be independent from hardware. So you can 
implement it in software in any way you like. Uh, and also MMU uh, cannot, does not directly consult or modify page tables. So you don't give that to MMU. MMU does, doesn't have to know about your internals of your page tables. Uh, it, it provides some flexibility. Uh, however, uh, each time you get a TLB miss, you make some CPU instructions. Each time you have TLB miss CPU instructions, it is uh, time consuming. Uh, it will have some performance issue. Uh, so in order to get more efficiency, what we do is we usually prefer hardware solutions if you have the hardware. So what about the page table size? Our uh, single uh, level page tables has to keep uh, all virtual uh, address, uh, page address to frame translation in an array. Uh, and uh, for each uh, page, we need to keep uh, the PTE, page table entry per page. That means uh, in uh, a typical, 32 bits address space and page size is four kilobytes. How many pages do we need? So let us make the math. So that means in 32 bit uh, address space, you will have our 32 bytes. Uh, that means, and your page size is to the power 12 in this case. Uh, 4 kilobytes is to the power 12. That means you will have to the power 20 pages. Okay. Uh, that means you need to get to the power 20 PTs will be your page table size. And PT is, is uh, in our example, it was like 20 something bit. So you need at least a word, like 32 words uh, for that. Three bytes was sufficient in the example, but our architectures doesn't have this uh, three byte words most of the time because of the powers of two is an important key there. So PT is four bytes. That means we are going to need uh, to the power 22 bytes of memory. Uh, to the power 22 is four megabytes actually, typically. Uh, four megabytes is not a big number for nowadays. However, assume it is a it is per process. That means hundred processes means four hundred megabytes just for address translation. Okay, so uh, this is actually an issue for us, sorry. So this is an issue for us uh, and we need to solve that problem. And as, uh, knowing that uh, the memory area of a process is usually uh, not utilized uh, completely, most of this 400 megawatts is just simply wasted. Okay, so this is the same math here, uh, and uh, the solution So can we store them on a uh, disk if unused parts of the disk? Uh, however, we have a trade-off uh, trade here uh, In order to have fast access we are using directly accessible indexes arrays. That means 
it has to be continuous. Otherwise, you can come up with some linked list, etc. But the performance will be very bad. So in order to make it continuous, you lose this opportunity to swapping out them on disk. So this is an issue. And in order to solve that issue, uh, the modern architectures came up with uh, multi-layer uh, page tables. Starting with Intel 8386, we have, uh, I believe, two level page tables. And then nowadays, we have four levels and so on. We are going to talk about multi-level page tables in a moment. OK, so now going back. Uh, so we have uh, this isolation address translation through hardware. Uh, context switching is fast because of this uh, base uh, pointer for page tables are just switched. So in Intel architecture, it is like a single register. So when you change that register, the context switch will be from one process to the other very simply because the data structure, which is basic data structure, which is the page table, is just simply changed. But uh, it is not that easy. We have an extra step, uh, and which is TLB. What will happen to TLB? That TLB, the current state of TLB, is very uh, actually uh, important because a process executed for a long period of time, and it has all of the useful addresses in the TLB so that you can have hit it, hits uh, at each time you inspect or update them. Uh, then some, suddenly you are switching to another process and that TLB will be useless because now you are in a different virtual memory. In order to provide isolation, you will not uh, make this TLB available to the other process. So you have to clean it. Uh, you have a chance, you can, if you have a large TLB, you can have per process TLBs or a part of the TLB can be process ID, for example. Uh, however, uh, most of the cases, you invalidate the whole TLB so that new process will start with a fresh TLB, which is empty has to fill it and during fill you will have many TLB misses, page table excesses. So uh, first time you start your process context after context which you will have too many TLB misses so it will be slow. That is the key element of context switch cost between two processes. Uh, what happens when a page is not in memory and what we'll do about that? It can be legal or illegal. We are going to talk about that in the following minutes. Uh, we don't like page tables have this large four megabytes of space. So we have to come, come up with a solution. Uh, and the next thing is, if application is not using the memory for a while, or if it didn't use it at all, what we are going to do? Uh, this mechanism, when you try to access a memory area, the page which does not exist yet, uh, needs operating system intervention. So that operating system can do either of the things, generate an error, you are accessing some strange area of memory, or you are trying to write a read on the area, etc. Or it can recover that, and sometimes recovery is very useful, we are going to see that. Uh, the mechanism is called a page fault and basically it is an interrupt. So when MMU gets TLB, TLB misses, translation mapping from hardware, the page table misses, it is going to pro, uh, provide a page fault, which is an interrupt. And that interrupt will uh, put operating system into the game and it is going to determine uh, if it is a valid or not. Uh, the decision by MMU is given by this valid bit. If that bit is zero, that means that page is 
not loaded in physical memory, there is no corresponding physical memory, so it is going to raise that. If it is one, it is going to use it and so on. Uh, also, we have another uh, version of this page fault, which is called protection fault. CPU is trying to execute a memory area which is not executable, or you are writing an area which is read only, and so on. It is called protection fault. Uh, if you, for example, try to write uh, the code segment in your code, you'll probably get this. Try to uh, dereference a function pointer and update it. Try that in your C code, you will see a protection fault. Uh, so, how uh, this is useful. Now we are going to illustrate that. In a typical example, I have all this memory mapped, but I don't use it. So if I don't use it, I can mark them as invalid. Okay. And since they are invalid, they, we don't have a corresponding uh, physical memory for them, okay? So in the second one, you will have less physical memory spent for the process. Uh, so we will have this memory area for process containing holes. And those holes are uh, the address translation which are marked as uh, invalid but they are part of the uh, mapping. In the memory mapping, they exist, but the physical, they don't exist, okay? Uh, so, so uh, I'm going to stop uh, for a while and record this audio because it is a little long, I believe. And this will be part one. And in the uh, part two, we are going to talk about how to handle this page fault. And we are going to talk about important uh, part of the memory management subsystem that is uh, called demand paging and copy on write. Okay, I will see you in the next video.